702. Okay. <laughs> Call the meeting of the Waterbury Village Trustees to order for Wednesday, April 11th, 2018, here at 7 p.m. in the Steel Community Room. Um, is there anybody here from the public for something that's not on the agenda? Um, moving right along then. Um, you have Dana Allen about a uh, request for an event at the uh, pump park. Yes. Yep. Would you like to, do you have anybody else that's coming? Well, or? I thought Noah was going to be here, but I don't know if he got out of the shop in time. So <laughs> where should I Sure, you can have a chair right over there and right. kind of explain what you're uh, up to. Copy of dinner? Is that the agenda? For tonight? Yeah. Just yeah. sorry. For Mary. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, so what we're hoping to do um, is basically just hold an event at the pump track down at the Perry Hill Trailhead. Um, we're kind of envisioning this as sort of like a back-to-school event, so kind of a family-friendly deal. Um, we'd like to do it in the evening, so this would be on August 24th is kind of the date that we've kicked around thus far. Um, Hoping to basically do an event where we have, you know, in the evening time slash into the night, so there'd be lights. We've got a couple guys who have some big contractor lights that can light up the park. Um, and then we were talking about maybe doing a little bit of music down there, um, talking to a couple of food trucks to see if they'd be interested in coming in, parking in the, um, kind of in the defined parking area for Perry Hill. So maybe having them set up there, and then we've talked a little bit to Vermont Beer Shepherd to see if they'd be interested in catering that, um, you know, in that same area. So that's kind of the, the general gist of the event. Probably run something like five to nine would probably be the limit. <clears throat> I can't see it going a whole lot later than that. What day of the week is the 24th? It's a Thursday. I need to ask is it during the week like or? It's a Thursday night or a Friday night. I can't tell. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> that was a Friday night. And what sort of a? August 24th. What age group are you kind of looking to it? All ages, honestly. I mean, we want to do it. Like, we've noticed that the pump track is super popular with younger kids. Um, but honestly, everyone who rides bikes at Perry Hill seems to hit it at one point or another. And so we're talking to anyone from, you know, kids three, five, six years old, whatever, up into adults. So kind of just an all ages event. Bicycle Express and WADA have talked about it a little bit and they're really interested in doing sort of a, a family event, but that you know people without kids would feel comfortable going to as well. So, so who's hosting the, this? Is this WADA? Yeah, so WADA in partnership with Bicycle Express. Oh, together. And then we probably, I mean, we're probably going to end up talking to Waterbury Sports a little bit because it would be good to get those guys in on it as well. Um, but the idea originally came from Bicycle Express as something they kind of wanted to do. It's close to their shop, that sort of thing. So, so you would have any displays or people, you know, kind of riding bikes? the kind of demonstrations or something? Yeah, like I think it would be a little more freeform than that. We'd probably do some like pump track races, like timed laps. Honestly, we haven't really gotten too far into the details yet. Um, just looking at this point, it's something where we kind of have, you know, this sort of like fun festival environment where we've got a little bit of food, some beverages, um, be able to ride bikes, have some music, kind of put the whole thing under lights. And is it for um, a fee, or is it open? No, I think we just do it open. Yeah, I mean, there. You know, obviously, if we're gonna if we're gonna work with Vermont Beer Shepherd and have beverages, we might encourage donations. We usually don't sell beverages. Um, the licensing when catering gets a little tricky. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd probably do donation for that, but the event would be completely open. Um, food trucks would charge whatever they charge. So if we do end up going that route. So. Um, are you planning for bathroom accommodations? Or? Yeah, so we'd probably end up using the ice rink 
So we'd have to just coordinate with them and make sure there's access. But if people are coming on bikes, it's pretty close by. So I think we'd be pretty squared away there. Who is it that was doing the catering beer? Uh, Vermont Beer Shepherd. Um, it's the Uwalds. They live up in Duxbury. They started a company called Vermont Beer Shepherd. And basically what they do is they go around the state and they get some of these smaller breweries who don't have distribution. Um, they serve as distribution for them. So it's kind of a cool way for them to get like craft and micro brews distributed to a wider audience. Um, and so they've actually worked with us a ton. Um, primarily Amy Scharf, if any of you know Amy. Um, she's been working with us a ton on sponsorships. So they've done three events with us so far now where they basically handle um, you know, beverages, licensing, catering, serving. So they're under the Vermont liquor licensing laws, they're essentially our caterer. So all the liability goes towards them. That covers the site. They have to set it up properly. But since they're licensed to do that sort of thing, it's it's really easy for us to kind of plug in. So they would be selling alcoholic beverages there? Or? The idea is that we'd have beer, yeah. So, and then again, like I said, we probably wouldn't do sales of beer. We do like donations. Um, just because again, selling beer versus donating for a beer, there's some paperwork involved there. And so typically what we've done is as part of the Vermont Beer Shepherd sponsorship of the club, they typically just donate that in kind. And then we just encourage people to donate. And then that goes to defray the cost a little bit. So. What do we do in the at that beer thing in Rusty Parker Park here. Permit. That had to go through state permits. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. But they have the well. They also need a liquor license from the town. Of they had to have somebody transfer their liquor license to the location. Yep, and that's so that's a catering license, and so we've done that with like the Bicycle Express event. They catered that. And so that's not, a, that's not an, a location that typically has a liquor license, but they have a catering liquor license. So it transfers to the site. And then there are requirements that you have to set up, you know, an enclosure and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of what they do. Mm -hmm. So we basically kind of say, all right, this is our setup. What do we need to do to make this all legal and, and work? And it's, they go through the liquor department and they get everything set up in advance. So the beer would be sold in inside an enclosure, I mean, that you yeah, typically, typically in, the, in an enclosure. Exactly, yeah, you have to set up a like fence and basically, it, yeah, exactly, it's like Arts Fest. Um, so, and it. since we're working with uh, Bill Woodruff to put up a fence along the edge of the road, we'll already have pretty much half of it done anyway. So then we'll just create a temporary fence for the event. Yeah. At, the, the beer at the park, when they did that one there, they had them do a double fence, one that was outside and then a, yeah. In their fence, it was actually the proper, you know, the people who were responsible for the inner fence. Yeah, yeah, that's a fairly So typical people setup. couldn't lean over the rail and oh, uh, right, right, drink right. that way. <clears throat> oh, here he is. Found him. <laughs> now you're on the spot. Oh, I couldn't leave the store. <laughs> that's what I said. Yeah. Here, I can move over if you want to get in the hot seat. Okay. This is one of the owners of Bicycle Express will be co-hosting the event with us. So we were just talking about the The Out of Town Bicycle Express? The out of town bicycle. Technically out of town. <laughs> yep. By like what? A quarter of a mile like that? A little sliver. <laughs> but we're gonna annex that, right? Yeah. We'll just turn that into water. Good. Well, welcome to business. At least you're on our water system. I, I definitely am on your water system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a whole complex thing we had to work out. <laughs> but Great. What is, what's your name? I'm Noah, by the way. So I run the shop in uh, town, I guess out of town. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically we've been in business for 12 years. Chose Waterbury for our location uh, based on the area of recreation here. And uh, yeah, it's kind of just moved more to our clientele. So, where were you before? We were in Northfield, Vermont. So, um, the thing that I liked about here is it has a really good uh, chapter um, and like a kind of like just like a good following, and it's like a good group of people. Um, like, you can run a bike shop and have fun, but I like I'm more into it to, you know, like have like, kind of like the vibes of being a bike shop within a community, and it's been really cool to. Kind of come in here and get accepted by the chapter. So, 
trails up on uh, across the interstate are pretty uh, popular in the evening there in the summer gosh there's that's primarily what WADA does. That's what we take care of and, and develop new trails and that sort of thing. For right now, we've also got trails out of Little River we've developed as well. So, and hopefully more. Um, you mentioned working with Bill Woodruff to put up a fence. Um, is that to keep cars from parking or to keep the bikes? It's so the plan right now is to basically um, this spring put up, and this was actually permitted in the original pump track permit. We just got the permit sort of reissued. Um, but we're going to put up a split rail fence um, along the side of the road next to the pump track. One, to sort of discourage parking to the greatest degree that we can, and two, to basically um, keep kids and, and adults and everyone else from cutting in and out of the pump track. Um, We've noticed it's a big issue. People ride down the road, get speed to get into the pump track, and then they sometimes cut out a little early on the road. And as you know, it's a pretty <coughs> well-trafficked stretch of road for such a small side road with the ice rink and the dog park and everything down there. So we want to cut that down. It's just a safety issue that we feel like we can solve pretty easily. So that's going to happen this spring. That's not really in connection with this event. This is something that Steve Watts Beach and Bill Woodruff and I have been working on for a little while. So that would happen this spring? Yeah, April 29th. Um, if you guys know Nat Fish, probably know yeah. Nat. Um, Nat's on our board, and he's going to be helping us put up that fence and that sort of thing, do some other work down there. So hopefully April 29th is our first work day, and that's that's when we want to get it done. So. And I'll just put a, an acknowledgment that I'm on the Winterfest Committee. Yes, thank you. And we just you. Uh, provided a, a grant to help for those improvements. Yeah, that's going to be huge because it's a fair amount of material between that, the rolling structure, as well as the other fence mm -hmm. across the road. So sticks and stuff has always been really good to us, nice. but this is this is going to be a larger ask than anything we've done before, so that grant is definitely going to help. Yeah, I think that, that was helping you kind of come full circle for what you needed. Exactly, yeah. It was really a nice thing to, to get involved with. Yeah, totally. Well, thank you for that. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. So do you think you'll have at it with parking without cars parking along the road or are you going to make arrangements we're, with over at the ice center? Yeah, that? we're going to try to, so we're doing two things, um, you know, we've, we've got that area that the village improved, you know, on the same side as the trailhead side and that's really been good. Um, the informal parking on the other side, we're going to expand by using a couple of posts and some rope in between. We can't really do much more than that because that's in the floodway. And so we can't really improve it beyond that. We just like to encourage people to park out in the field a little bit farther. Um, we've talked about putting up some no parking signs on that same side of the road to discourage people parking into the street. I think the fence is going to discourage people a little bit too. Um, but the other thing we've talked about with Bill is putting in basically a, a more obvious trail from the ice arena so that people can park at the ice arena and then ride their bikes back to the trailhead and then up. You can um, ride down our water line there where the road is supposed to go. That's exactly what we've talked about, yeah. He's like, why don't we just put it basically on top of that because it'll be more or less maintained. And we said, yeah, we can do that. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to encourage parking at the ice arena <laughs> to the greatest degree possible and not crowd that road too much. Yeah. So we'll see how well that works. I think people are gonna end up parking on the shoulder anyway. But we'll try to encourage it as much as possible and put up signage at our kiosk that says, would you please park at the ice arena if there's not adequate space here. Which shouldn't be a problem if they're gonna go bike, they just ride their bike a few extra yards. Easier said I know. <laughs> I mean, I, the, the irony of people not wanting to ride their bike before they ride their bike is not lost on me. So. <laughs> You'll have to fill in a big mud hole across the road there too, won't you? Uh, people drive SUVs and outbacks, they'll be fine. <laughs> not, we'll let them deal with that mud hole. We could, but then we'd get in floodplain trouble. So. It is. You've done this before or not to this level? This or? pump track event? Yeah. We've never done this before, no. This is a this is a new event. We've had kind of informal sessions there just with friends and that sort of thing, but it's never been anything organized and advertised. So that's why we kind of like to, you know, we wanted to come to you and say, hey, this is our plan. What do we need to do to make it work right? 
So. Is Gordon Miller involved at all? Or? I'm sure he'll be there. Yeah, we usually get him on all our events. So. He was uh, helpful in getting that pump park going, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. the oh, was he? Came, yeah. yeah. He came to us to, um, you know, get, get approval to put it in there. And, yeah. No, it's been, I mean, I think it's been a huge success for the community as far as a lot of people are concerned. I mean, I see kids there all the time. Families go down there frequently. Plus, the bikers who are there anyway for Perry Hill seem to really enjoy it. So, Looks a lot better now than it did a few years ago. Well, and we're going to try to keep it that way. It's a lot of weed whacking and mowing, so we're working on a plan to basically keep the weeds knocked down. Yeah. Um, I spent five hours last year weed whacking it. I don't want to do that again. <laughs> That was too much weed whacking time, so we're going to try to make it a little more regular. So, yeah. Yes, sir. Question. Andrew. 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 Anyway, my question to you two gentlemen, you said you're doing something on April 29th, so is that a work night or is that part of the deal? That's, uh, that's our first scheduled trail work day, so that's typically we, we gather up a group of people at 9 o'clock in the morning and we have a crew that heads up Perry Hill to do work on the trails, we'll have a crew that's going to head out to Little River to do some work on the trails out there, um, and then we're going to try to do that pump track work. Well, the reason I'm not questioning what you're doing other than that the April 29th is the day that the fire department is going to be putting on the Wallace Farm fundraiser at the fire station for the spaghetti meal. And I would hate very much to see something in competition with that. So you might want to keep the settings at 4.30, 5.30, and 6.30. We will be well done by 1 o'clock. And we'll be hungry. And we'll be hungry. <laughs> so maybe we can have a little sign down there. Sure. Yeah, bring it down to the kiosk. We'll post it. Yeah, I think that that'd be great. You're gonna have some hungry workers that are gonna be like, oh, let's get a dinner. I just wanted to make sure you were, were not having the event that night as such, and so we're gonna compete with the Wallace Farm fundraiser. No, nope. thank you. Be well done by one. Most people are done by noon anyway. Are you you associated? I, with I'm. I work at the shop with Noah, so oh. yeah. Long time water member, <laughs> and a Waterbury Village homeowner. Yes. There you Absolutely. go. That's even better. We drew him in. We made him do it. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your question? Do they? Oh, um, food, food trucks coming yeah. in as part of, an, of the event. And I was just wondering, um, we have a food uh, a vendor. A vendor ordinance. Okay. And not sure if those trucks, because they're part of an interior event, if that would be subject to the vendor ordinance. I think so. It probably would. Okay. Isn't that something that they'd have to go through with Steve as well? And I think we can do a day fee now. Um, do How do you guys? We do just it did for it. We did the ordinance, so we're a little rusty on that. <laughs> <laughs> and we went back and forth and back and forth. So um, there's, a there's a fee, yeah. uh -huh. but I think it's only a, a monthly fee. It's, it's not real onerous. Well, yeah, there's, um, depending on what it is, there's like a three-day fee or a monthly fee. Was it? I think there was one possible three-day thing. So I guess we would day. give you that information that um, that would have to be looked at, you know, and we'll give that heads up to you and we can confirm it with yeah. you. Okay. Um, it's like 15 or dollars or something. Okay. It was... So it's kind of it's kind of like what ArtsFest does for when they yeah. bring in all the vendors. Essentially, it's a similar idea. Essentially. Yeah, I see because ArtsFest does it with all those food vendors under the umbrella of ArtsFest, and there's more than one mm -hmm. food vendor. So we'll have to look into that, and we'll ver we'll verify that for you how that's structured. But okay. that's an element to cover. Okay. Just like the you know the catering is separate. For yep. Beer Shepherd, and you already know what that requirement is. And yeah, and so would our point of contact on this be Steve Watts Beach? Or. You mean for. Sort of like for the vendors. Necessary permits? permits? And yeah. Who does issue those? 
Carla. Carla. Carla will issue them, but usually Steve's the one that clarifies if they're legitimate what they are. Okay. You work with them anyway. Yep. Um, also, will you have like some internal staff that sort of keeps that will be kind of keeping an eye on the the numbers of people in the order and that that traffic is flowing okay and yeah. you have your own folks sort of looking after that. Yeah, for sure. We'll have our board, and then we usually have a crew of volunteers that that typically helps us out with events like the gravel grinder and things like that. So yeah, yeah, we'll definitely have people making sure we're not causing a ruckus. Yeah. So. Will they be riding on the trails on the other side of the interstate as well? Or? No, not really at night. I mean, maybe people will go out for night rides. People do that anyway. Um, but it will be more focused on the pump track. You know, that will be all lit up. So um, I think the focus will definitely be there. you see any problems with that? Or? Not really. Well, we, you and I don't have to ride. There's a requirement, yeah, you guys have to come. Yeah, yeah. These guys will give you bikes. Just we'll let Natalie ride. ride. She has a little scooter, so. Perfect. <laughs> you can ride the scooter on the pump track. <laughs> You've seen the pump track, I'm sure. I mean. Oh, oh yeah, we've all seen it. Yeah. No, it's good. It sounds fun. kids kind of zinging around. It's an awesome, awesome asset to the town, you know. An event like that would just highlight the asset that you have, you know. So makes people want to live here. Um, just kind of a good social aspect to the town itself. So brings the housing value up, I think, of the whole town. For sure. Mm -hmm. So you good. want to approve it subject to getting a vendor permit? Yeah, I, I, I moved that we approve the uh, event for Bicycle Express on our. August 24th with the provision that they cover all the permits requested. Was it six to nine or? No, it was it five was to nine. Five, five to, to nine. nine. Yeah. Family oh, friendly. Yeah, I think yeah. five to nine. We yeah. initially talked about it being later, but I think five to nine might work better, yeah. honestly. That's yeah. right when it's going to get really dark at that time. Yeah, August. it'll be, August, yeah. yeah. August, maybe it'll be dark a little before that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you'll, you'll have, have stragglers that you'll be kicking out at nine, you know, right. so. I think that's a good window. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's it. So five to nine? Yep, five to nine. All right, I, I'll second that. Motion has been made and seconded to allow the uh, Bicycle Express to have an event at the Pump Park on August 24th, 2018, uh, from five to nine, and uh, you need to get the vendor permits. And, um, and, and, and the approval for the, oh. the bathroom yeah. use. And check with the ice rink on the, the yeah. yeah. The bathrooms and things. So. All those in favor say aye. 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 So. Well, good luck and we hope the weather is good. And yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, uh, <laughs> if the weather is nasty, you'll probably get canceled because you don't want to destroy the pump track. <laughs> that would be pretty miserable to ride if it's puddles. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it, guys. Thanks okay. for coming. So, yeah. Yeah. Sorry I was late. No problem. Oh, He's making us look bad. What the heck? <laughs> he fell there before you. Oh, so. dude, you good. I'm a talker. We need to put it right on my calendar. <laughs> Next up is uh, request for the Hunter Mountain Children's here for a fun run at Rusty Parker Park on September 8th. Are you fellows here for that or? No, sir. Something else? Yes. That's it's on the agenda? Or? Apparently not. Oh, okay. What is it you wanted to? We, uh, with uh, apologies, are not on the agenda. I, I'm a little surprised by that. Uh, we're here to seek permission for using Rusty Parker Park for uh, June the 30th for the NQID uh, festival and celebration uh, sponsored by the Rotary Club. Um, and uh, our, we request your permission to use the park for that day. Uh, the parade this year is uh, planned to uh, go off at 4 o'clock instead of the traditional time, so we're shifting things around a little bit. 
um, and we also are, I'm not quite sure how highways work with the village right now with the town, uh, but we're um, seeking permission to um, take uh, operational control of the parking spaces around the park where we hope to set up vendors uh, uh, and uh, we have a festival permit application before the select board that should be heard next week um, and uh, other than uh, other than those adjustments that I've just described um, it will be typical to what we've done in the past down at the park and I apologize that it's not clear on your agenda and you have proper notice and if it requires for us to come back we're happy to come back how early were you look at the start. um i think we probably tr try to start setting up that day in the morning um, and kind of have uh, operational control of the park for the, the entire day uh, the festival itself will be um, uh, the parade will be at four uh, and then we'll go through fireworks uh, and then after fireworks at 10 o'clock we'll we'll shut it down but the vendors uh, and stuff would be available to the public before that, before for yes. as yes. soon as they're set up, basically. Yeah, we'll we'll probably try to start setting up that morning, mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, the, we'll uh, work with the public throughout. When I had talked with Bill for a while, we were talking about the possibility of asking to close down Rotary Way, uh, but at this point, we've decided to just ask for kind of control of the parking spaces and we'll keep traffic going through Rotary. So um, there may be something out there that suggests that, but as of last night, we decided not to try to request that. And I want to emphasize, if it's better for us to come back, we're happy to do that too. Yeah. Um, so what sort of things will you be doing in the park? Is it? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, we are uh, seeking a festival permit to serve beer um, and wine. Um, and is that where you did it before? Was it in We've the done it before in the past. We were down at Forest Field for the last two or three years. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, um, we're coming back to the village. Uh, and it will, the, the um, contained area for the beer tent will be in the uh, corner of the park uh, where the patio is. Um, I think you still. The village will still be in existence on June 30th. Whether or not it's in existence on July 1st is okay. indeterminate at this point. But our, June 30th, our, it, is definitely it may be our last hurrah, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I think you do, uh, town as well as the village, you permit to close the street for the parade and all that stuff. And Rusty Parker Park is, you know, the village. And so... Uh, um, Did you want the, the parking spaces surrounding the park for the entire day during that setup and just getting your trucks in? Yeah, the we're hoping to bring vendors in throughout the day and kind of get them set, set up around the perimeter. Mm -hmm. um, so we would kind of comb things off in the morning uh, and get set up in the morning, early afternoon, and then the parade is scheduled for four. Uh, and, you know, we'll. Uh, We'll start with the, the festival activities after the parade. Uh, we've got a couple bands lined up, and we're going to be trying to recruit food vendors and others. And, um, so then and we're also contemplating and working towards uh, having kids' events on the state lawn. Um, so we're kind of going to try to work both venues at the same time. Uh, one thing you might keep in mind is on the Park Street side, quite often when we get a heavy event, people tend to park out where the driveways come out from the houses and you really should make sure that those spaces where they come out of their driveways are open. Okay, thank you. We'll be sure to make sure that that's passable. So all the events aren't going to be at Fires Field, that'll just be no. the fireworks? Or? No, our theme this year is bringing it back to the village. So where? where will the fireworks be? Fireworks are going to be behind the state office complex. Uh, we've been working with Dave Tennyson to confirm the location, but uh, uh, 
uh, similar to what was done in the past before it was moved to Farsfield. Get smoke on Randall Street again. <laughs> My dog won't like that. Let's beg pardon? My dog won't like that. Uh, <laughs> um, put him on a leash for that night, please. We don't have to take him out of town. You know? It's over when it's over. But when it's all over, the layer of smoke that goes to the top of the street, it's fun to watch. <laughs> Well, I hadn't heard that all the events were coming back to the village. That, that's the theme for this year. So the music is, is going to be at the park. You said a couple of bands. That's on in Rust Parker Park. Yeah. And then do you have an, uh, an end time in mind? We do. Uh, fireworks are scheduled to start 9.30ish, plus or minus. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're going to offer live music up until when the fireworks start, and then we'll terminate. OK. And then the only other thing I'm thinking of is there's going to be a lot of crossing of Main Street uh, for those events you said at the Horseshoe, and you just you'll have that covered for we have, uh, we have safety. Yeah, uh, and we've scheduled uh, to retain five sheriffs. Hopefully, we can get all five. Uh, but we've get we're in contact with the sheriff's department to try to provide some public safety. Help in managing that during yes. that day. Okay. And I apologize, this is not on your agenda. Um, have you talked to Deb Fowler or anything? Or we have, um, and we're hoping to recruit some help from the rec folks to deal with and help with some of the stuff on those state lawn where the kids' yeah. activities will be. She just kind of usually coordinates the events at Rusty Parker, doesn't she? Or? Yeah, yes. then she would let us. Weekly thing yeah. she takes care of. So. Uh, we've chatted with her a little bit about um, recruiting some help for pulling off the kids' stuff at the state lawn. Oh. Um, we can follow up with additional chat about um, what we're hoping to do at Rusty Parker Park. Are okay. we okay with that? They just need to make application? Then? Yeah, I don't see anything that we haven't dealt with before. It seems pretty reasonable. So, so you would write this up and submit an application through... Uh, okay. Um, it goes to Deb. Through Deb. 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 She's a recreation for... director there that... Yeah. Okay. Um, but can we approve that now, or do we have to wait till that application comes? I think through? it's subject to application, okay. but mm -hmm. you know, I don't know that you need to come back. If uh, all you right, know, I'll get you. something out tomorrow. Uh, I'll copy Bill, and if we need to come back, let us know. Mm -hmm. We thought you were here to participate in the children's room fun run. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think we're. Okay with that, and uh, you get an application in that describes what you, you know, have told us. There, we'll be okay with it. You can go ahead and plan, and Great. so we can approve it subject to application. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think part of the You want to make a motion that we approve those conditions subject to uh, a formal application to use Rusty Parker Park for. June 30th there Thank for you. the... Yeah, I'll make the motion for that. And second. Yes, I'll second that. Um, motion's been made seconded to allow Rusty Parker Park to be used on June 30th for the uh, not quite Indians. Independence Day activities um, and closing off the parking spaces around it and uh, things, so subject to the formal application to, uh, you know, Deb Fowler. Okay. So, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank, you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Just, just a quick point, I'm not going to the mic. Uh, normally, the things that happen with these guys, the first item of business normally on the trustees' schedule and the select board is to consider modification to the agenda. That was not on the agenda for tonight. Maybe it was mentioned over two minutes late. So don't have that burden because you were not on the agenda because you had the opportunity. And did, did you bring that up at all? We, and never, we thought we were on the agenda. We yeah, actually we didn't bring it up. And they thought they were on, but they didn't. That's why we didn't bring it up. <laughs> it was no a problem. colossal. Okay. And your names? 
My name is Bob Olson, president of the Rotary Club. I know, I know. And that's Harry Shepard, uh, emeritus president of the Rotary Club. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. And that's why you asked for the permit later. Yes. Okay. We'll do lucky. Thank you. Yep. Next up is the uh, conflict of interest policy that. It's no longer Mountain. Oh, okay. Child care fund run. All right. Which we received a letter, and they are looking to. Um, this is the child, the children's center that wants to do basically an annual um, event. It's a fun run, September 8th, a rain date of September 22nd. It would be at Rusty Parker Park, set up time would be 1 o'clock. They'd have registration uh, up until 3 o'clock. And then they're having this run that goes over to the state complex from 3 to 3.30. And then come back to Rusty Parker Park at 3.30 to 5 for food and kids' activities. They're going to clean up by 6. Um, they said it'd be no more than 100 people. That's really what they anticipate. That includes children. And uh, they would have some music playing through some speakers, but no band. Um, uh, you know, it's just food and celebration, and they will need access to the bathrooms. Um, and that really is it in a nutshell. And what time is it going to start? One. one. Set up at one. So people so will be coming in five. around 2, 2.30 to register. They do literally the fun run across the street at the state complex, come back for food for like two and a half hours, <clears throat> 3.30 to 5. Mm -hmm. uh, one and a half hours. They had done this before? Yes, they've done it before. Um, they, um, let's see, where did she say that? Oh, here we go. They've done it annually. They skipped 2016. It's always been very well managed. Um, and they just want to bring it back this year. So, um, Is that a Saturday? Well, that's a good point. Yes, it is. It's it's Saturday. Saturday. And the 22nd, I suppose, is a Saturday, yeah. too. I didn't look that up. But I am. Um, any questions? I thought it was fine. We can prove that subject to uh, any conflicts or. Right. I think it's clear because this did go through Deb yeah. Fowler, and okay. she was just like, I think you guys should be aware of this. Um, September 22nd is a Saturday. So... You okay with that? Yeah. Sorry, so is this on September 8th or September 22nd? It's September 8th, but they would like a rain date of September oh. 22nd. Oh, okay. Got it. Same time, same activities. Hunger Mountain Children's Center Fun Run. So I would and, and so far we haven't seen the schedule for the uh, bands, bands and stuff. But usually they aren't that late anyway. They end in August. Yeah, yeah they, they end in August. Yeah. Yep. So it would be available. So if you're good with that, I'll make a motion that we approve the Hunger Mountain uh, Ch Children's Center Fun Run for September 8th with a rain date of September 22nd as described in their application. One to five. One to five. Yeah. One to six. One to six, right. To be cleaned up and out. Six. I'll second that. The motion has been made and seconded to approve the uh, Hunger Mountain Children's Fun Run at Rusty Parker Park on September 8th, uh, running from one to six with a rain date of September 22nd. All those in favor say aye. 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 Now, conflict of interest policy. It was on the agenda before, and nobody had a copy. So, this is the uh, same conflict of interest policy that we sign uh, every year after election. Um, the same for select board, water commissioners, and trustees. Yes, I'll make a motion to approve 
the uh, conflict of interest policy for the Waterbury trustees. A second. Motion is made and seconded to sign the Village of Waterbury Trustees Conflict of Interest um, Policy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Next up, uh, update on the legislative uh, charter chain process. process. Um, some of you or all of you know we met on uh, Monday with uh, our representatives Tom and Teresa Stevens and stuff, talked about the questions that the legislative uh, council had given us and we invited Paul uh, Giuliani came and uh, you know, gave his response to the questions and uh, talked with uh, Paul, and Ter uh, Tom, and Teresa about some of the questions the committee has had that they're a little bit confused by us calling it a utility district and wanting the general um, authority of the statues and why did we want to do this and concerned about whether we're following all state laws and things. So. They had suggested we meet with the Legislative Council to try to answer those questions. Um, we're still trying to set up that meeting. Um, it turns out that the public can't ask for a meeting with the Legislative Council. It has to come through the legislators. So we're waiting for the chairman of the committee to set the meeting up for you know, us to go talk with the legislative councils and probably one of the uh, members of the committee will sit in on the discussions to hopefully, um, you know, explain, you know, what we hope to do with this on merging the trustees and the uh, water commissioners into one body and uh, things. So, uh, I don't know that we're going to get it in this week. We had originally hoped that we could do that. I don't know that that's going to happen this week, so. Um, update on the Supreme Court Hubeck decision. Um, Bill got a copy last week of the Supreme Court's <coughs> decision on the Adam Hubex case, that was the termination of the police officer by the trustees. Um, and I talked to both Dan Richardson and uh, Mick Letty, who argued the case at the Supreme Court. And uh, they said it was a very favorable decision to the, uh, to the village. They upheld the reasons for firing uh, or terminating the officer that it was a legal disability. And, things. Um, so they felt, you know, good about that. It did remand parts of the decision back to the trial court um, to, uh, they didn't address the issue of whether there was another uh, position in the department that he could have occupied. So that was information before the trial court. So he said it needed to go back to the trial court to correct their decision with regard to that, that testimony had been filed and was in the record. So he said that courts would take that up. Um, it's uh, not likely that the trustees 
you know, would need to be involved in that. All the information is in the testimony and already submitted. So he didn't know when that would happen, but um, it was issued on uh, April 6 was the date of the mm -hmm. decision. So. Um, open cruiser bids. Um, they were due on what Friday at Monday. Mo Monday yeah. at four thirty. Four thirty. Four thirty. Um, Lefty has been uh, graciously uh, showing the cars and keeping them uh, charged up and things. And we have uh, two bids. One is from the town of St. Johnsbury Police Department. Um, I'll read it. Uh, St. Johnsbury Police Department, town of St. Johnsbury, currently has an aging cruiser fleet and is in need of a vehicle to replace one of the four with 100,000 miles. The 2013 Ford Interceptor Cruiser you have offered up for bid would fit our needs well. We met with Mr. Say and test drove the vehicle and looked it over. The officer was calculated for both the, va the offer was calculated for both the value of the vehicle and how it was equipped with the center console, in-car camera, radar, radio light, siren, plastic rear seat divider, gun rack, and front push bar. Please accept an offer of $18,501 for the purchase of the 2014 Ford Interceptor SUV. Signed, uh, Timothy S. Page, Chief of Police, St. Johnsbury. Um, the other bid is from the Lamoille County Sheriff's Department. Cruiser bid. The Lamoille County Sheriff's Department is submitting two bids for the vehicles you have listed. Vehicle number one, the 2013 Ford Explorer. The Lamoille County Sheriff's Department bid is $13,250. Vehicle number two, the 2008 Ford Crown Victoria. The Lamoille County Sheriff's Department bid is $2,800. Contact intubation, Captain William Morley, Lamoille County Sheriff's Department. Um, the bids read that we could reject any and all bids that if we wanted, so. Mm -hmm. um, also, how was it written though? Um, I thought I recalled it saying that they would be bid on both cars. No, Bill put it in that they had to bid on each one separately. That's right. That they couldn't bid it as a package. <laughs> okay. Um, and then just out of, just editorial thing, the St. Johnsbury, they called it a 2014? No, 13. Oh, I wrote it down wrong. I was yep. going to say, I want to make sure they knew what they were. <laughs> okay. Um, that was it, huh? So you think that's yeah, a fair as price? Far as, as far as I'm concerned, that St. Johnsbury bid for the 2013 is an excellent bid, and uh, I'm perfectly happy with the uh, Crown bid going to Lamoille for the price bid because by the time we had to remove the radio and everything like that from it, it would put us another few hundred dollars added to the cost of keeping that. So I'd be perfectly willing to see them both go under those conditions. For those prices. <clears throat> Sold as is, huh? Yep, it was an as-is bid. So you want to make that yep. motion that we accept <coughs> the uh, St. Johnsbury bid for the 2013 and the uh, Memorial County Sheriff's Department bid for the 2008 Crown Vic? At 2800 2800 Do you get that, Denise? The, I think so. The Ford Explorer SUV's bid was $18,501, correct? $1, yes. yes. Okay. And then the Crown Vic vehicle number two was $2,800, correct? Yep. Okay, and those are the two bids that you're accepting? Yeah. Okay, got it, thank you. 
And they both leave fully with all the equipment and both of them is coming out of the, of the Crown Vic. Uh, the equipment would go with all of them. That was the way it was put out for the police officers. The bid was with the radios and everything in them. So these bids were expecting to have the equipment in them that, that they're sending now. They pulled out some of the equipment that was under grants originally that we couldn't keep, but all the other stuff was to go with the cars as they are. So what is the value in the Crown Vic of what you're leaving in there? Well, the I've, been, I've been to the state auctions a couple of times with state police cars and stuff like that, and I think like the Crown Vic would go 3000 to 4000 at the most, which means that's about all we can get out of it. And the, the bids were, the bids were with the equipment in it, so if, if we don't include the equipment, we'd have to, have to deny the bid. Do you know what the equipment is? In, in the, the Crown Vic is the uh, uh, light bar and the police radio. That's all that's in it. It has a, a divider for the you know, police protection in the back seat. Mm -hmm. yeah, little, yeah. But there's no other extra equipment in that one. Mm -hmm. um, so you move that we accept I, I move we accept the bid from St. Johnsbury for 18501 and the bid from Lamoille County Sheriff for the Crown Vic at $2,800. You second that? I second that. The motion has been made and seconded to accept the uh, St. Johnsbury uh, Police Department bid for the 2013 of 18501 and the Lamoille County Sheriff's Department bid for vehicle uh, number two, the Crown Vic, um, for $2,800. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. So. Do you want to give them a call tomorrow and tell them what's yeah, going on and okay. see when they want to come and then uh, either Bill or I can sign these when we know they're coming? Yeah, I'll, I'll give them each a call. And, and you put the mileage on, yeah. the titles. On the title, yeah. yeah. I can get a good day approximate mileage here with me, but I can get it right to the last number. You got their numbers? Um, I have it here with me, but it's a different story. I have their numbers here with me. Um, Next meeting is uh, would normally be uh, would it be twenty fifth. Right. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yep. That's my birthday. And Happy that's birthday. the historical <laughs> society meeting, oh, yeah. annual meeting oh. at um, it's at the. Uh, Actually, we're having region. a meet. Oh, we're having a meeting that has to get warned. It's. Uh, with Steve and the historical, the historic district presentation from the consultant. That's at three o'clock that day. Uh, Do you guys know about that? <laughs> well, you? yeah. If we agreed to it here. Oh, oh, well, that was the plan. That's why it was. Sorry, um, I stole your thunder. Do continue, <laughs> please. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, it's on the twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Yeah. Um, yeah, so is it okay to do it at 3, uh, yeah. three o'clock? It's the guy doing the uh, historical survey, mm -hmm. um, come and make a presentation to us before it it's submitted to the state historical division there. So. That's okay. okay. That's good. Okay. Busy day, busy day. <laughs> Then, if there's anything else to do that day, we can do it. Um, yeah, I mean, at 2 p.m. in the afternoon on the 25th? Yep. Yeah.
And that's when the um, presentation, the presentation the on the consultant on the historical um, survey of the Waterbury area where we were looking to expand the historic district. Okay. Um, you want to do the minutes? Mm -hmm. We have three sets of minutes. Um, let me see. Joint minute. Oh, I didn't see these ones yet. Did you guys see the night, April 9th? That's only Monday. Mm, no. Yeah, I, I did. I called Carla. It was a couple of re uh, mistakes, and I think she corrected them. Oh, okay. So you did look them over. I'm just scouring <coughs> them right now. Prepare resolution. Oh. Oh, I put that in the minutes. Okay. Good. So we have uh, minutes of March 28th. Uh, trustee, April 2nd, a joint with the select board, and April 9th, joint with the water sewer commissioners. Oh, sorry, can you say that all again? Sorry. Okay, March 28th is a trustee meeting. 28th, okay. 28th. Okay. And then April 2nd, that's a joint meeting with select board. Okay. And April 9th joint meeting with the water sewer commissioners and i'll make a motion to approve those i'll second it motion has been made as i did to approve the minutes of march 28th april 2nd and april 9th all those in favor say aye aye, aye. Anything in those bids they bring down a check or something when they I don't believe there's any set procedure how they've got to go about it we'll have to set it up in other words until we get the check we might be holding out <laughs> Just did. We can um, we can make could we make a photocopy of that? Um, or I can send it to her. I can, I can send it to you. I'm not sure we can get yeah, in, in there. there. Yeah, right. That's fine. Okay. You can email it to her. They're on the website. They're on the website? Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell her that too. So you can just go to the town of Waterbury, look under trustees yeah. and um, they will probably not be posted until well, yeah, maybe tomorrow okay. afternoon. Oh, they, they don't get posted until they're signed. Oh, so we just signed them. But if you want them tonight, no, I. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I think that they don't get posted. Well, they have because they have to. They have to be posted within five days. 
Oh, and then I guess they make a note that it's draft if it hasn't been signed. I guess that's what I get. So these probably aren't posted because it hasn't been, been five, five days. days. Right. But when we go two weeks before the next meeting, they're yeah. posted before, before the meeting. So you'll be able to look at it in five days? With yep. Okay. Or okay. even before, because now that they're signed, yeah. they'll be posted tomorrow. Okay. Um, this came out of that book. Just like you can go to get all the agendas there in the same place. It's just agendas, and then under that is the minutes. Okay. So you're ready to adjourn, and we get brownie points from Denise for being here early. Make the motion to adjourn at 8 p.m. Second. All those in favor say let's.